Hi, I'm Paige and this is my Nintendo Switch collection, barring all the collector's editions which have a much more interesting backdrop, but it's a glass cabinet so we're just going to film here. I am borrowing professional lights, but I am filming on my camera on top of a chair so it's still probably not going to look that good. Um, and I'm also using the front facing camera so I can make sure the <laughs> phones are right. So I'll start with my current Switch, which is the Splatoon 3 OLED Switch has the really cool patterns on the back and then this is the dock so I got myself that this is my third switch because um, my second one was running out of warranty and this was just sort of a present to myself as I was about to have a baby the month after this came out some things I will record on a table because it's a bit easier like the collector's editions and stuff um, but I'll show some of my controllers that I've got so currently I have two pro controllers which is the Splatoon 2 pro controller and the Malzino Pro Controller, which is very cool. I mostly just use the Joy-Cons myself. Um, I've also found this the other day when I was packing up. Um, so this is a third-party Hori Joy-Con that you can only use in handheld because it doesn't power itself up. And I was sort of wondering why did I get that, and then I realised it's because it has a little D-pad, and Switch Joy-Cons do not. Um, other controllers I've got on me right now. I've got the um, Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller, so this is where you can see it's not a real N64 controller, and the Super Nintendo one, as well as a Pokeball Plus, which is probably not charged, no, <laughs> it's not charged. I don't use this carry case very much anymore, but it is the kind where you can fit like the dock there, the switch there, power cord, extra things, and these guys, which has just reminded me about my joke box. Also make sure to store my Mr. Game & Watch parts in an amiibo carry case, so I don't lose him. Now don't mind the dust, but these are all my Joy-Cons. The um, Splatoon 3 OLED ones that I showed before, the purple and orange ones, the red and blue that are like the opposite of the original neon set, which I don't have anymore because that broke, had to send them off with it. The Splatoon 2 colour Joy-Cons, which is the green and hot pink, which I have partnered with the Killer Queen Black sticker. I used to also have grey Joy-Cons with my second Switch, and I put a Dragon Quest slime sticker over that. A couple of, you know, extra ones of these. I bought this one, <laughs> like, yesterday. I don't have any white Joy-Cons to go with it, but maybe there'll be some Tears of the Kingdom ones I can pair. Also, if you are in a multiplayer household, definitely get yourself one of the Joy-Con charger sets, for sure. And then I just wanted to show off a couple of my husband's things. Like, this is the plain Switch Pad Pro, which you put on the sides of the Switch. You can only use it in handheld because it obviously uses the Switch's power, it doesn't have its own source, but it's good for if you've got big hands, just want a bit more space and not being cramped up. I also got him this 8-bit Do Pro 2 controller, which is really good, especially because he prefers the layout of the two sticks being next to each other, or if you like having the D-pad up in front, especially because, you know, the Switch itself doesn't have one, the Joy-Cons. Um, there is some messing around to get it to work with, like reconnect to the Switch if you've been putting it to other Switches or the PC, but it's pretty good. Feels nice to get too. And we have three GameCube controllers with uh, the clean and clean, two of which came out with the Smash 4 on the Wii U, which is why I have the Wii U GameCube adapter because it also works on the Switch, it's just a USB plug-in. And here's the Smash Ultimate one. Only one of these works. I've got to test them, but only one of them doesn't have stick drift. I also have both the Pokémon Tournament Pro, Tournament Pro Pads, which work both on Wii U and on Switch. Got the Pikachu one much later because I love Pikachu. Um, and yeah, it's pretty limited what games you can play with it. I'll have to double look it up whether or not you can play it with retro games because it depends whether or not the stick inputs as a D-pad or a control stick. But this is based on how the um, arcade setup is for Pokémon. But I do also have some accessories I forgot, so we're going to bring those up first. So this is a stand for the Switch where you plug it in because it charges at the same time. And especially if you've got a Switch Lite or something, I definitely recommend it. Um, it's yeah, really good angle adjustments to play with your Switch. Here's your controller brew. It's 8-bit do 2 It is super tiny but works with a lot of 2D games. 
feels generally comfortable if your hands are small enough. A generic switch stand. And this is my switch in the Nintendo Switch Flip Grip, which enables you to play vertical games such as Shoot 'em Ups and Donkey Kong. I can get it from Fan Gamer for pretty cheap, so I recommend that if you're into retro games. This is my tried and true launch day Nintendo Switch carry case, which I have yet to find a suitable replacement for, as this can carry one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve games on its own. The Switch, and then I can fit these two things in here, and this one can fit also twelve games. And this carry case, which is six, twelve, twenty-four. So that's about 48 plus the one in the switch, um, along with the two straps and the two styluses where I keep them so I don't lose them. And yeah, this is the main design. Normally this is filled with games, but I took them out to catalog them. And you can also find these other designs. Plus this off the Nintendo reward store, but I found it wasn't really that convenient for me. So we'll get started with the game. I'm not sure yet whether I'll just do the collector's editions in one section of the video or if I'm going to splice them in the alphabetical order, but we're mostly going from A to Z. Or 1, 2 to Z. So yeah, 1, 2 Switch is a launch game. Not that good. They also haven't, at least in my country, because I'm Australian, so when I'm talking about prices or things like availability of games, that's what I'm talking about. Um, um, I did, I'm trying to think what my favourite game with this one was. <laughs> I think the swords and the dueling. Obviously Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, I do pretty well like this game. Uh, obviously there's some issues with the... I, yeah, one thing I didn't really like was the fact that the holidays weren't in from the start and doing this missing a heap of stuff till it eventually got updated kind of thing. So at the moment I'm actually playing a lot of Pocket Camp and not this. Arms is a pretty good game. Also one that like at least, yeah, so it seems to be kind of out of print around here. This is just like, a, some of the insides of Switch games have like the menu instead of cool art and some don't even have cool art. Yeah, this game is pretty fun. I need to play it more. And yeah, where I'm from, it seems to be kind of out of print. And then a half a year or whatever ago, they did like the trial online. And it's like more people might buy the game if you actually have it available. Like there's a lot of people that don't even know about the eShop. Not everyone that buys games is super online. Astral Chain is one I've not finished, I need to get, I've barely played any of it really, but it is really good. Uh, I need to get to it. And yeah, that has a nice art too. I think that's one where I got some of my Nintendo awards to print alternate art that I need to do as well. But what I did play, I did like. This is the Atelier, yeah, Atelier Dusk Trilogy collection, which I imported from Play Asia. Um, so it's, yeah, nothing in there. Um, so Tele Aisha, DX, Eska, and Logie, and Shaylee. I've only played um, Aisha because I did a review of it, but then that made me buy these. I think it also came with a cute little... Yeah, sometimes when you pre-order stuff from Play Asia, you get this cute little case that you can put a Switch game into. Big Brain Academy, Brain vs. Brain. That's okay. I do actually have the entire series and was considering doing a video on it even though they're quite similar but it does have one interesting little piece. Um, but this is pretty alright. I think I'm, maybe I like the Wii version better because the Wii might sneaks to you. <laughs> I actually have no idea why I have this, um, especially because you need to download most of the game. I think it might be because I just realised I didn't have it on the 360, like I've got a decent 360 collection but I must have realised I don't actually have these games. I do like recently um, EB Games and that and if in Australia we've recently been getting a lot of physicals of indies. My main problem is that they all seem to cost like way too much compared to how much the game actually costs, like really overpriced. So I've got a few in this collection but when I'm looking at ones that are coming up I'm kind of like I don't think I can really justify it anymore. Uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, I imported this because it didn't get a physical here. Um, it also has a cute little mini CD. Didn't play too much of this, but I, I think I originally got it because it's got Ruby characters, <laughs> which... <laughs> um, but it's pretty fun. Bravely Default 2, I've picked up, 
I haven't played it. I think I picked it up because I saw it for 40 bucks, um, and I'm like, oh, wow, like, you know, Switch RPGs never go down in price that much. It actually has gone further down in price to 30 but still decent for it. I've got the other games to play first. Let's see, last year we had a physical print of Bayonetta for the Switch, which is probably my what, third physical of the game because I've got the PS4, Steelwalker, and the Wii U. Um, so they did this like the month before Bayonetta 3 came out. And I like the um, internal art. Fortunately, not every Switch game has those. So I've got a physical of Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. This is a really fun game. Um, it came with a DLC, which I hadn't bought yet. Uh, you can actually play it in co-op, which I think a lot of people might not know because it's not in like any of the trailers, which is super weird. I would have bought it sooner if I'd known that. Captain Toad, I played that a little bit on Wii U. I played a lot more on this. It's a really fun little game. And yeah, that's just the tutorial type thing. It's a little puzzle game. I think, yeah, they added co-op to this version. I'm pretty sure the original didn't have it. And a few extra stages as well. Carrion, uh, so yeah, that was, I've got a yeah, physical print in Australia, so I was like, why not? Um, so it's like a fun game where you are this fleshy, kind of looks felt because of the pixely art style, but like this fleshy monster and you're trying to escape from the facility in which you've possibly been created or contained at anyway. Um, but I think I bought it on PC because I thought it might control better, just the way you sort of stretch and stuff. Got this, I don't even like puzzle games, so I was going to say that I don't think my collection is as big as I thought it was because I do tend to get rid of games if I don't like them, but now I've gone through this and there's a few where I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't not like them enough to get rid of them, but there are some games where I do actually go, no, I don't, I have no intention to play that. Like, I don't like puzzle games, but I did pick up this port. Do kind of wish I got the um, PS4 Special Edition though, because that had a really nice still book, but at least we've got this. Cat Quest and Cat Quest 2. So the second game is co-op, the first game is not, and oh, you've actually got a reversible cover, so that's always nice as well. But they're fun, cute little action RPGs. Collection of Mana, so this was the first time Trials of Mana got released outside of Japan, just before they did the remake. Um, it's also got the Final Fantasy Adventure Mystic Quest, I think. Oh, okay, it does. I was worried because I thought maybe one of these didn't have the multiplayer option, but I think they actually do because uh, Secret of Mana and Trials have multiplayer. And this one has... Oh, and that has a pretty cover art. Reversible. Oh, no, it is different. Okay, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, I like that. I might swap it over later. Cooking Mama Cookstar. This is actually, I kind of want to do a video. There are some Switch games that are only available physically, like Ring Fit. This, this one I regret not doing a review on, but I thought it was going to get taken, because it got taken off the eShop and stuff, because the um, actual like owners of the IP were like, I'm not happy with this product, we don't want it out. But they kept printing it physically for quite a while. Um, recently there's been some action, so I think they're not going to, this isn't going to get printed out anymore. It's, it's not very good. Um, it is weird to see Mama like dab and we have rainbow, um, <laughs> rainbow grilled cheese and get to do silly things with the food. Um, but it is an interesting piece. Crash Team Erasing and Nitro Fueled, aka the game that tricked everyone um, into thinking it was okay. And then after all the reviews are out, were out and stuff, then they're like, psych, we actually do have microtransactions in this whole but it's good to have something other than Mario Kart to play. This one I imported, have not touched it at all, but I've heard really good th I've heard really good things about it. So one day, um, just a pretty like a nice one here. Yeah, Cruise and Blast is a game I really like because I like I love playing Cruise in USA. Um, this is based on an arcade game with some more levels, but it's kind of just redos of the same levels. It's super fun, you can unlock like a unicorn and a fire truck and you can race as though it's pretty really basic, but yeah, if you just want a super duper arcadey, silly racing game, definitely get Cruise and Blast. Yeah, also picked up Crypt of the Necrodancer Switch Edition, which came with a DLC. Again, just getting those physicals of indies. This one has a sort of, almost looks like it's reversible cover art a mini CD and a game manual, which folds out funny, so I don't like that. 
Cuphead physical came out recently, so again, didn't need to get it, but just thought it was cool. Has a nice inside art um, and comes with some funny little joke cards. Like, I thought vegetables were supposed to be good for you. So that's nice. I definitely did not get the collector's edition with the marionette. That was um, space and money wise. Just not a good idea. Demon X Machina. Technically, one of us owns the special edition, so I'll go check whether it had anything more than the figure and, you know, film that as well. Didn't play a lot of this just because I guess not really good at shooters, plus shooters where I've got not just around and up but also <laughs> below me. But I do want to get back to it eventually. On the plus side, we're actually getting an actual Armored Core game. Obviously not for the Switch, but that's coming. Uh, Darkest Dungeon Physical, which I think has most of the DLC. Um, I'm not 100% sure because sometimes, uh, as I'll complain about later, some of these like, indie physicals come and then you're like, oh, I'll get it because the game's complete and then more DLC gets announced. Um, Dark Souls Remastered on Switch. Played hardly any of that. Uh, probably would have actually given it a real go if you could change the control layout. Because again, it's like that Japanese style control, like the confirm button's the opposite. Uh, so it just a, a kind of more difficult game with that kind with trying to play a more difficult game and then your muscle memory not being right for the controller layout isn't good. Deadly Premonition 2, haven't played. They did port it to PC. I don't have the first Deadly Premonition on the Switch because I heard that the Switch version was missing some content. I'm not entirely sure. I'll look that up though. And yeah, this is probably the worst running Switch game as far as I am aware. Um, Diablo 3, the Eternal Collection, got an exclusive Ganondorf set. So yeah, that's fun. Um, so yeah, I played not a lot of this game. I think someone eventually convinced me to play it because they were like, it's like your one of your favourite games, which is Gauntlet Dark Legacy. And then I was like, well, why didn't you just say, why didn't you just say so? And like, yeah, it is very much like that game, except that the areas are randomly generated instead. So, haven't played heaps, but I did really like what I have played of it. Um, this is the Digimon Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition, so Cyber Sleuth and Hacker's Memory. Uh, for some reason, at least in my, it's got half of a cover. Um, in my region, it's on PlayStation, you can only get one of them now, like digitally anyway, which is really weird, but on Switch you can get the pack together. I've got a couple of Disguise games, so we've got Disguise 4 Complete, so I think I've got all the Disguise games on Switch, I don't have 6 physically because that was a review code, um, but yeah, so I guess what are we, what are we missing on Switch 2, D2 and 3, hasn't really been ported to a lot of things. Um, so this Sky 4 Complete has a nice reversible cover, uh, came with a poster, which I'll just show the back one instead of pulling it out, but it's like a um, motivational poster that says sardines, you can't really see that, and a bookmark. So I've found a few bookmarks in some of these, I might actually take them out and use them instead of getting lost in these games. Also Sky 5, super good game, if you're looking to get into Sky, pick that up, do not pick up Sky 6. So, big brain training. For Nintendo Switch, uh, this is uh, not available in America. Presumably, I'm gonna say it's probably like legal issues due to the advertising, or so. So that's the only reason I can think of. So it's basically pretty similar to the DS games, where it's like math questions, memorization stuff. I'm not really like fun assessments for ADHD, but it's nice to. I was keeping it up daily for a little while till I missed one day, and then of course I'm like, well, there goes my 40 day streak. Time to give up forever. And I'm just going in here. And yeah, that came with a stylus because you play it in handheld. It's also one of the few games where you hold the Switch. Where did I put the Switch? It's also one of the few games um, where you hold the Switch like this way and play with it like this. This is a game actually I picked up recently. I didn't even own it on the Wii U. I had bought my mum a copy, but I didn't have the um, Wii U version or this, but now I do. Um, and it's, yeah, it's pretty fun for co op. Uh, you do have that sort of problem of jumping on each other's back, but on like Yoshi's Crafted World, it's not nearly as much of a pain. Doom 2016 on Switch, which I bought because <laughs> why not? It's the, the, the new Doom on Switch. I actually really like the multiplayer of this game. I'm well, one, I get motion sick. Two, I'm just not good at shooting games because I don't play them. So that 
but then I try to get into them and then I get the motion sickness. <laughs> I really like the multiplayer in this game though, you need to find people to play it with because obviously the servers aren't going to be super active, but I really like the modes and I pretty much just use a rocket launcher because I can't aim. Switch cases are very slippery and annoying. I've got Dragon Ball Fighters Z, not Z, um, yeah it's a pretty fun fighting game. Yeah that's what I was going to say it. Alright, hopefully the camera angle hasn't changed too much, I had to plug the lights in. Um, so I've got Dragon Quest Builders and Dragon Quest Builders 2. I originally had this on Vita and that, and then it got a Switch port. Um, 2 is one I, need, I basically consider games that I've actually made a decent amount of progress in. As Switch game cases are slippery. I <laughs> Games that I've actually made decent progress in are the ones I consider as being in the backlog. Uh, this one I got up to Crumble Done. Um, couldn't get them to get enough resources turns out I need to make their hovel a bit nicer than just having one toilet and a giant room where everyone sleeps in it. Uh, this also has a really nice reversible cover so I've got to remember to switch it to the old style one. Thankfully with save data I don't have to have my main character looking like this one I can make her look like that one <laughs> which I do. Uh, there's, yeah, there's demo, there's a much better demo than the one I did a video on for Dragon Quest Builders 2 so you should definitely play that and see if you like it. Dragon Quest 11 Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition S for the Nintendo Switch. I played the game when it launched on the PlayStation 4, so I haven't really played this. Um, I personally can notice the difference in the graphics just because, you know, I've played like 80 something hours of the game on the PS4. I do like that they re-added the 2D stuff in this version, um, and you can play it the entire thing in 2D. But this also has like a really long demo, so if you've not played Dragon Quest game, this is this or Dragon Quest 8 is a good place to start. Those being the only two I've actually beaten that aren't spin-offs. <laughs> but yeah, that is a really good game. Uh, I don't have a physical of Dragon Quest Treasures because I don't always buy physicals of games I review. Like Eastwood um, kind of depends on how my budget is that month, but Eastwood is a game I really really liked and I did a review of that. Um, I even ordered a special edition that's hopefully going to come sometime this year uh, which is the version without the game and actually just has the vinyls and uh, board game which I want to review. Everybody's falling over. So the Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 8 twin pack because why Why wouldn't you? Um, they did a physical of Final Fantasy 8 on PS4 but not 7 I'm guessing because of the remake, but that just seems really weird. But hey, Cloud finally, his main game is actually on a Nintendo thing, so he does actually deserve to be in Smash Bros. I was not happy about that <laughs> when he got announced for Smash 4, because all he was on was Theatre Rhythm. Fire Emblem Three Houses, I really liked this. I played to the um, Blue Lions route. Haven't touched the DLC though. Um, and obviously by the time this video comes up, I will have picked up Fire Emblem Engage. Speaking of which, give me engagement <laughs> and comment. Um, but yeah, this is also really nice. I like it because it doesn't have the weapon triangle. And the school stuff does get a bit tiring towards the end, but I didn't mind it. So fitness boxing, pretty good rhythm boxing game. I didn't buy the sequel. I am definitely going to get the Fist of the North Star version though. But it's... um. Ring Fit's the best game for like fitness on Switch, but if you've got limited space, then this is a bit better. Alright, we were up to For the King. I don't actually know much about this game. It does come with, it says all the DLC, if there hasn't been any more. Um, so yeah, it's a tabletop, tabletop, roguelite. I thought there was multiplayer. It's got a nice, yeah, I, I really prefer if games have at least the inside art, if not a reversible cover instead. So Galgun 2 is a rail shooter, it's an import but I picked it up from a local store so that's why we've got the uh, R18 Plus stickers on it, where you uh, shoot girls with happiness to get them to leave you alone. Gal Metal is a game I, I reviewed but I didn't do a video <laughs> review of it because I got worse the further I got in the game. Basically it's a rhythm game where you're the drummer, so you are the one making the rhythm, the well, the pattern, like you've got patterns on the drums you can use with either motion controls, uh, buttons and such. Um, so you've got to maintain that 
the beat and I can't do that. So I just, I even went to do the earlier levels and I was somehow doing worse than I originally did. Um, and this one has a cute little, some cute stickers. It wasn't too, yeah, it wasn't too expensive to get physically. Um, it came as like a, a grey import, which is uh, local retailers here where they import a game that hasn't gotten a physical release and then they sell it as pre-owned, even though it's actually a new copy. So you might see that with a lot of Switch games in Australia. Plus it came with a DLC and I didn't have that. Go Vacation, I've done a video on that, I've done a few videos on that. I love the Wii version. This changes a few things, like there's some minigames missing, some added... I think it's a, like, I'm not sure how the print of this is in other countries, but it seems to be a bit more trouble to get again. But I really, really, really love it. It's just a super fun minigame compilation, but you can drive and vote and waveboard, like, you know, you can... Not waveboard, um, jet ski around the map to get to the mini games, or you can just directly do them. You've got a little house to decorate. You can do four player locally. I love this game. <laughs> Haven't played Guacamole, but I picked this up for like super cheap. Uh, Guacamole and Guacamole Two. Um, I have another game by these people. I think they did Severed, which is on 3DS, Wii U, Switch, Vita, several things. Um, yeah, a little instruction manual, little poster, internal art that unfortunately has the um, warranty information. Um, yeah, this is my, my, like, I'm not rich rich, I'm just very financially irresponsible. And I might have gotten some of these games on a discount, not all of them were launch. Um, like buying a copy of a game that I already bought digitally just to su support it. <laughs> Um, Hades, everyone knows that's good. Yeah, physical came with, what's that? Okay, digital code for soundtrack. Um, the sort of like the art booklets they do, so it's just like, you know, a character and that, but it's still like a little nice thing to have. Harvestella is one of the games in my more recent to get back into playing once I'm done with some review games because I'm about 30 something hours into this. Kind of Square Enix's take on Rune Factory. Combat's kind of basic, but the boss fights are super fun. They're like straight up like Final Fantasy XIV boss fights. Um, and even like, you know, they've got the AoE markers, they've got the different mechanics you do. And then even there was just a random monster in a cave and he did the same fear, obviously because it's Square Enix, they can use each other's assets with permission. Um, did the same fear thing where it makes you like run away when it inflicts it on you. So that's kind of the, like the main thing I look forward to in this game is progressing towards the boss fights and the character stories are good. I haven't touched this one, I think I got it for Valentine's last year, so I should probably play it by then this year. Um, I don't think it's super long, so I will. This is an import from Fangamer, although a lot of Fangamer games have been coming to Australia through EV games. Just cost a lot. Um, this also has a mini CD, so what's that? Three mini CDs so far. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, so this is... I bought it to play it in co-op, but some of the stages you can't do in co-op. Um, and then obviously the frame rate's very worse, so I have to play it by myself because my husband refuses to play it with me. Uh, this is sort of, this is set before Breath of the Wild, like where, when, you know, everyone was still alive. I'm um, pretty sure it's some alternate timey, whammy stuff, as far as I'm aware. I haven't gotten, like I said, I prefer to play the Warriors games co-op, so I haven't played a lot of it myself. I have finished at least the main story mode of Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. I actually own all three versions of this game. Um, I am definitely like that we've got the fairies in this one, um, although they looked cuter in 2D, in my opinion. And Linkle, because you could get Linkle um, in the Wii U version, but you didn't get her little story levels. So I was glad I actually got to play that. Um, so this is also super fun. The story is super like fanfic -y. Basically this chick's obsessed with Link. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's how the story ends basically, but you get you get characters from all sorts of times. One of my favourite things about this is yeah, the characters have a massive variety in their movesets. Like sure some of them might not be great, but still. <laughs> really good game. Iron Fury, um, and a retro styled, not actually retro, um, FPS game, haven't played, um, definitely know it's better than the first game featuring this character though. Um, when I 
pre-ordered it. It was saying it came with the stickers. I'm kind of disappointed in the stickers of that. I was hoping it would be like some of the enemies look like little spidery bomb guys. Uh, is this a manual or... I oh, know this is like an art book as well. So it's a 3D model process there. But as you can see, there's some interesting em enemy designs. I have three Just Dance games. So I've got the one that launched on the Switch. So I picked up, I think, all of the launch titles. And yeah, that's also how my collection is this size. I've had the Switch for the whole five years. Well, nearly six now. Um, this is 2020 and 2022. I haven't bought like every year. And then this year, I think it's just the digital code, like the last one. Super disappointing. Um, I really, really, really wish... I do like the subscription thing. I wish you could just download the songs and be able to play them offline for at least a, a week or whatever. Like Nintendo Switch Online, check if you're still subscribed. Because... Um, internet not good in Australia, um, I don't like playing a, the dance and then it shutters or closes and if the dance crashes and you're doing like the calorie counting or something it actually just resets that loses it. That really bothers me a lot so I often haven't picked these up basically unless there's enough songs on the cartridge for me to want to keep to be tolerating it because if there's not enough on this then I have to do the online and the online doesn't work great. Kiwi is a game I reviewed, a video review. I uh, really like it. Kind of got annoyed that the Christmas theme level was in winter, but whatever, it's fine. It's a game set in Australia, not made by Australians. Um, but yes, yeah, it's a super fun co op game. So if you want to play two players, definitely get this. Although, if you don't mind playing on PC, maybe get on PC because there's DLC and still no plans to put that on console. So, me. Killer Queen Black is a game I really liked. I think I did a video review of that. That actually, I don't know if it is right now, but the online stuff is going to shut soon if it's not already. So this is kind of the best way to get this game because you can do local co-op and I'm pretty sure you can do additional system co-op as well. Um, I'll have to show it later if I can find the pieces, but it also, I, like, yeah, I got a review code for this. So I didn't need to buy it. I kind of just really wanted the um, controller skin. <laughs> I don't play Kingdom Hearts, I don't really play rhythm games, but hey, it's a Kingdom Hearts game on Switch that's not a cloud version, so I think I got that for cheap, that's why. Kingdom Majestic, which is Kingdom New Lands and Kingdom Two Crowns, so one of them is the one you can co-op. Um, so I kind of like when they do these physicals with extra stuff like the lenticular bit, a um, bunch of art cards which is really nice. Um, this game's kind of got, this and like a few games have got that one where I don't really like the pixel art style, like it's still definitely you know, lots of effort and really good but just something about how the characters look really Atari-esque bothers me. Um, but what I don't like about these is that, um, you know, you have all this stuff and it just slips out. Uh, and, but this um, came like after some DLC and stuff, including like the Bloodstained crossover, so we have a very nice reversible cover art um, with Miriam, I think her name is. I didn't buy that, I did originally, I used to have Bloodstained on Switch and I don't anymore because it took a very long time to fix it and then I don't think the fix was that good, so we just have it on PlayStation. Kirby and the Forgotten Land is one of my two games of the year, of last year. Super awesome, just one of, you know, one of the more, one of the most beautiful Switch games. You can play it in co-op. It only is slightly bothersome with the first boss, but then after that, the tethering um, and reappearing to the main player isn't too bad. I love Kirby. <laughs> actually, I think my Switch games are the only ones that I've actually finished. Um, and yeah, next month is Kirby. Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, and I don't own that the Wii version, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. Kirby Star Allies was the first Kirby game I actually finished, um, so I played that all in co-op the whole time. So I think a lot of people rate it a lot lower because it's quite quite very short, but I did really like it. Obviously my standards were a little bit lower, we've got the instruction type insert, but I also quite like this. Also a game of the year of 2022. Live Alive, uh, again, I don't always um, pick up physicals of review games, I got this a bit later, but I really wanted to support this, like, Square Enix doesn't need my money, but 
the sales of a game do actually influence business decisions. Um, more so like the day one sales and stuff, but... <laughs> Beautiful game. I did a written review for this on RPG site. I didn't, um, the first time I got a code from Nintendo, which is a bit of a complicated thing. Um, so I didn't do a video on that because I'm not sure if we had the rights to do that. Um, basically, there is a demo of it. Basically, you're going through these different, there's chapters for each character who are set in different periods of time. So they're like their own little mini RPGs, which will later converge together. Um, a lot of them are quite different, so like one is almost no combat, like a space horror, it's really narrative based, another one is one where you're setting up traps in the wild west, another is like one you can stealth, you don't have to, but you can stealth your way through it, or you can try to kill absolutely everyone. I also walked into some super bosses on accident, so. <laughs> but yeah, uh, these two super good do recommend. Luigi's Mansion 3. Love this game. You can play it in co-op. You've got to get like a fair bit into the game. But once you unlock Luigi, you can play the whole thing co-op, which I did. I played it with my husband. Um, so one of the few games where I actually sort of beat it relatively recently. Uh, not recently. Relatively within the time frame of actually buying it. Um, there's also the the local play modes or whatever, but there is online mode. Um, and that's super fun. So if you've got friends to play it with, I also say you should. But Luigi's Mansion 3... Also one of the pretty Switch games, also really definitely say you should get this. So I forgot to show this. I'm seeing too many empty cases so I'm forgetting to go through them. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Obviously I actually got my Wii U when Mario Kart 8 came out. That's basically what convinced me to finally pick it up. Um, so obviously Deluxe was great, loved playing that, played a fair bit of it. Um, I mean um, the Squid Girl, unfortunately her um, taunt type animation got, got changed to be less uh, offensive um, and they've been adding DLC which I have mixed opinions on I don't like most of the tour tracks and I don't like how visually they're getting better but a lot of them really just don't compare because like this was, the Wii U was my first HD console so to me like all the tracks in this was like oh my god it's so pretty so to see the ones that don't look quite as good is a little disappointing Mario Party Superstars is the better of the two. Uh, it's a little confusing. There's Super Mario Party and Mario Party Superstars. This one is a lot more standard. It's got a bunch of the old um, game boards and a mix of a lot of the old mini games, including some of the best ones ever, like Book Squirm. And it's got proper online play. I've only played a little bit of this, but yeah, I love um, like the Mario Party games I've played as like two and four, I think. So I really like this. Metopia is a game. I reviewed, um, yeah, I think I, I think I bought it, but reviewed it for RPG site. So that was my first reviews for RPG site. This is a port of a 3DS game, but they added a horsey and also wigs and makeup, so you can really go all out with the Miis. Um, it's it's really fun. Basically, it's sort of the ones. It's like a longish game, but you want to play it a little like a segment at a time because it's super formulaic and it sort of follows the same pattern. Uh, so that, that's my <laughs> my advice. Monopoly for Nintendo Switch. If you want to play Monopoly, get on the Switch because you can pause it and you can save it and you can come back to it. You don't have to leave the pieces on the table basically. You can play it online, um, you can quit and then everyone has to try and buy up the other person's stuff and then that causes a lot of drama and people don't talk to each other for a while. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. If you want to play an old style Monster Hunter, definitely just go with this one because you can get it on the Switch basically like an all-star like anniversary type game it has some slight things with like the certain new moves basically it plays it's still the old style of game before world changed up a bunch of things um, you can play as the cat you better recommended for high school players but you can play as the cat there we go there's art there double check I keep forgetting to check. Here we go, here's Metopia. And my pipe's pretty nice. There we go. I think Monster Hunter Stories 2. I didn't get super far through, there is a big demo. Um, I do get three quarters through the first game though, um, which is on 3DS but also available on phones. So it's Monster Hunter but an RPG, like a monster catching one, so you get to catch different monsters, ride on them. Super fun games. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which is literally just Monster Hunter Rise, um, 
physical, but they um, added the DLC code for Sunbreak, but I was able to like sort of do a trade deal and stuff, so I was kind of got it cheaper than just buying the expansion separately digitally. But yeah, that is um, the newer style of Monster Hunter, plus the extra things that they've added to Rise, which was like the wire bugs, new movesets and stuff. Um, I think so far my weapon of choice was my corn gun lance. I don't know if I upgraded it from that game. <laughs> Moving Out is a super fun game, reminiscent of like Overcooked, except it's you throw couches through the window and stuff. But yeah, that chaotic cooperative gameplay with like, um, maybe it's slightly less chaotic, but <laughs> you're moving furniture together, it's super fun. My favourite, I think I play as the TV head. There's also DLC out for this game now. Um, I think it's also Australian, yes, it's made by Australian devs too, so gotta support that. Really, really fun though, there's like a level where it's basically Frogger, which is <laughs> while you're trying to move furniture, so that's really funny. My Heroes One Just- My Hero One's Justice 2. Uh, this is an arena fighter, obviously I picked this up instead of the first one. I haven't gotten a lot of the DLC though. But it's fun to have like one or two of these types of games. Nelke, Nelke and the Legendary Alchemists uh, Ateliers of the New World. Um, this is a spin-off game, so if you're looking to get into Atelier and not this game, this is a like town building sim where it's just an yeah, 20th anniversary, so you're getting all the characters from the other games in there showing up. Neo, the world ends with you. Need to play this. Um, I don't have two on the Switch anymore because the controls for the first game on the Switch are awful for your wrist or you've got your touch screen and I have the DS copy somewhere so I'm just gonna play the DS. You can also get the first game on phones um, but if you're gonna play touch screen then it's fine to get it on Switch just not if you want to play it on the TV because it, it's like pointer controls but you've got to keep your arm up it just this one controls better. <laughs> New Pokemon Snap was a disappointment for me not enough to get rid of it but um, it's just too grindy really like that's the main issue it's beautiful but you've got to keep redoing it's not you redoing stuff to figure out the puzzle it's you redoing stuff to earn your level up so that yeah like yeah it's not to get better photos to raise your score it's just like it's just a big grind um, new super lucky's tale this one was a massive pain like for some reason there was this and someone else i didn't get it but someone else had ordered again that's supposed to come out at the same time um and then our store locally just didn't get it for months these like this and his um even though we could see there was other the other shops but this is a super fun little 3d platformer didn't finish so far but like yeah one of the other 3d platformers i recommend on switch i'd say this and um a digital only one is lunastice but, which is a lot shorter and cheaper. Also like the Tori games. So this is a new Super Mario Bros U Deluxe with a little sticker on it I've got. Um, there's also a little Bouzette. I think the artist name is Dreamy Deco. Um, so I, this is one of the ones I think I a lot of the, sweet, the Wii U ports I do have on the Wii U. I think this is one of the ones I didn't own on the Wii U. Um, so I've got this um, 2D Mario kind of skipped my particular generation, like the last 2D Mario Mario game was a year before I was born, until I was about 11 years old. Uh, so we just had all the three years, so really not playing a lot of those. Uh, I found this just feels really slippery, so I don't like it. Um, also I think Peach Chat does not nearly get as much attention as she deserves. Um, I recently picked up the um, new Super Luigi U on the Wii U that I have no reason to have because it's included in this but I really wanted the green cover and it was under 100 bucks now so. Near Automata, no reason to have the Switch port, I have access to the PlayStation port, um, the End of Your Heart edition for reversible cover. One thing I super was um, impressed with is that this actually released for the same price you can get this on the PlayStation and other stores like so the reduced price, oh I also need to swap the case because it's got that weird watery wavy I probably can't make it at all but you know if you've got a bunk switch case you can just get a replacement as long as the actual insert is fine so goddamn superhero which is actually just the reversible cover for get that out of there. no more heroes 3 I don't have one and two on the switch physical either import or 
sorry, for me it is an import because um, Lemon Run Games is America. Um, but I do have them on the Wii because when um, Trevor Strikes Again got announced, I went and bought the second game before it showed up in price. Akami Physical is an import, but um, you can always check, like, who, like um, there's a bit on the eShop where it lists what languages are, so you can just go on the Japanese eShop or whatever eShop and find out if it has English support. Um, I think I also own this on the Wii. One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, so that's my only, I think, Pirate Warriors game I've got. So this one, yeah, so there's just like a lot of the spin-off Warriors games before, like how Warriors started making things different, it's a bit more standard going through recapping the story. Ori and the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, Ori and the Ruler Whisk Dual Pack, they also sold them separately. But again, this is one of the ones where it was like overpriced physical, but definitely better off getting the dual pack money-wise, although I guess now if you can't find it in the store... Don't know. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with some of these, um, some games that have multiple games physically, they're all on the same cart and they actually just like when you pop it in, it pops up as like different software. So sometimes you end up filling your whole screen with like, <laughs> like you recently played games, there's a bunch of games because they're all on one cart. But I really like that they can do that. Overcooked All You Can Eat is uh, Overcooked 1, Overcooked 2, with all the DLC and a little bit of extra content. It's not it's cross-play with other consoles, but you can't play this version with people that own Overcooked 2, so I do actually regret trading in those to get this, because now I can't play with my friends. It still was a bit cheaper to work out, um, because there's so much DLC for Overcooked 2, it was, like, gonna be cheaper to buy, like, the season pass stuff than the individual ones I was missing, which I think also happened with our digital game, um, Shantae Half Genie Hero, it was cheaper to buy the ultimate edition of the game with all the DLC, than to buy the DLC for the game I already had, which was... you got, you got to keep your eye out for stuff like that. But yeah, I absolutely love Overcooked. I play as Platypus Chef. My husband plays as the Raccoon Chef, which we actually have a plush of, so if I remember when I'm filming all the other stuff, I will maybe show it. And before I forget, we have the Raccoon Chef from Overcooked, which is what my husband plays as, and I got it for him as a present because they few Simba at Studios, I think they did like plush of this guy and Kevin, and I just can't believe they did this guy. It was like best present ever. Persona 5 Royal, I have beaten that one. I own the Fancy Collector's Edition for the PS4, and I actually beat the game on Switch after I had my baby. It's like 93 hours playtime. And this is, I love when store books are just, like that's it, that's what the game comes in, you don't have the case and the steel book, that really annoys me, I'll show off my steel books at the end I guess, the ones that are separate. But if you haven't played, like I said, if you haven't played Persona 5, you're better off playing the royal version unless you got 5 for cheap or something, just because of the quality of life improvements you get a bit extra story. Um, and the time is now because it is on everything and I'm pretty sure it's on Game Pass too if you, you know, budget conscious. Persona 5 Strikers is a warrior style game. Again, they're sort of doing different things with these spin-offs. So this actually came out before Persona 5 on Switch. <laughs> um, so this is like a sequel to the original game so it doesn't include characters because it was in development before Royal so it doesn't include some of the characters from Royal so you just got to keep that in mind when playing it. Um, it's a single player one, so that's why I haven't gotten very far. But yeah, I do like what they're doing. I do like the normal Warrior style game, but I do like what they've been doing with like these greater single player campaigns, going out and doing a lot of different things or keeping that same fun combat format. Pikmin 3 Deluxe is actually how I finish the game because it is co-op. And we're supposed to get Pikmin 4 this year, so that's good. Um, I don't know if this one has a demo. Pikmin 3 is... Like, you know, you, you, if you, like, yeah, if you're trying to save money, we don't, like, when this video's out, we don't have Pikmin 4 yet, so I don't know if that's a better jumping point, but Pikmin 3 Deluxe is super fun, you can play it in co-op, it comes with all the DLC, you do have to um, actually unlock the DLC missions now, um, so we had to actually play through a bunch of the um, treasure hunting stuff to get to the Christmas level, but it's one of the really beautiful games. Obviously I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain what every single game is, but Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX, which is like a remake of the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. 
not super far into this. I'm a Pikachu, of course, of course. Um, but I do like these styles of game. And actually, these kind of games is why I got confused when I was first playing a dungeon RPG, because in this, like, um, because it's, you, you, it's, it's roguelike in the sense that the dungeons you go to are randomly generated and you've got to make a certain progress um, before you come back, otherwise you're starting again. But you've got like a place to save your money and things like that. Because um, I was playing a dungeon RPG and I thought I had to get through the dungeon all in one go, which I didn't have to. You, you could, I could escape, <laughs> but I'm just used to like thinking on this type of dungeon game. Pokemon Legends Arceus, have not finished, got to the snow area, really like what I have played of it so far though. Um, I personally do like the art style, obviously, now that we've all seen what uh, Violet looks like, this looks a lot better. Um, uh, yeah, I like the watercolour style, I like some of the systems, like the boss fights and things like that, where you've got a dodge roll. I don't like that there's no breeding, but I don't like what they've done with it in Violet either, so. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. Um, I kind of busted the game, I mean the game is busted because you can play it with this weird drop-in co-op thing where you're just two people against one. Um, I love Pikachu, I love that you can get a girl Pikachu in this game, that's why Pikachu is one of my favourite Pokemon because of the, the heart tail on the girls. Um, call my second ever shiny Pokemon on this because you can see them out in the open. Um, and then I fed it a bunch of rare candy so it's kind of probably doesn't have the best stats and stuff but it's also level 100 so I don't think that matters. Pokemon Shining Pearl have not actually touched this at all. Um, they ruined the contests, so. Oh yeah, I was gonna double check. <laughs> I keep forgetting to check for ultimate art. The Mystery Dungeon is all like the different emotes and stuff. You get the maps for the Pokemon games, which is fun. Obviously someone would have better scans of these, but I'm just giving you a general idea. Pokemon Sword, I reviewed that myself. Still had fun with it, even though, you know, I found it a bit lacking. Um, that doesn't have a map insert, but I liked it well enough. Like, it's still Pokemon, it's still fun, as we can see with Pokemon Violet, even when it's busted as heck, people are still having fun with it, because catching Pokemon is fun. Also, not the map. I got this because I got it for $36, the month after it came out. So, I think it was some kind of pricing error, but they honoured it, so I think for that price, it's... It's kind of worth it. Um, that one I sort of put down at the moment because I just couldn't be bothered, but it's probably that one where I'm actually going to complete a dex for once. I just don't like that I have to do the gyms to get, <laughs> to get like the, you know, so they'll obey me, so now I'm like having to do things in a certain way, and I, worse before I was just trying to catch every Pokemon I saw, but then I was like, ah, they're not going to listen to me in a second. Pokemon Tournament DX, which is really funny because they do the Here's the deluxe version of the game. It's like we're adding DLC after the fact. Um, but yeah, I really like this. Um, it's got, yeah, so it's sort of Pokemon Tekken style. Uh, they've got this weird thing where you're in a 2D fighter and then you'll do a certain move and then it'll turn into like a little arena 3D fighter. Pikachu Alibre is the best. But yeah, if, you're, if you haven't heard about it, you should definitely check it out. Rayman Legends Definitive Edition. This was supposed to be a Wii U exclusive and stuff happened, so now it's on pretty much everything. Um, I didn't have it on that, so now I have it on the Switch. Haven't played this, want to, um, even though I don't really support Nuts and Made you to their Harvest Moon shenanigans, but this is like, yeah, a road trip fishing game. So you're fishing, you've got some other stuff to do. And I will eventually be in the mood to play a good fishing game. Which this hopefully is. So I've got River City Girls and River City Girls 2, which I imported. I did get the soundtrack CD with this one, but I didn't pre-order this soon enough to get it, so I'm really mad about not having a soundtrack CD. Obviously for me, it's cheaper to get these from PlayAsia than Fangamer, because um, US dollar high shipping from America to Australia is ridiculous, so I don't get anything from Fangamer, any I don't get anything from Fangamer anymore because I cannot afford it. But I really like this game, so I haven't finished this one, but you want to co-op, well you don't have to play co-op, but you know, if you want to beat em up playing co-op, the River City Girl games are really good. They like beat em ups, um, but they're based on the Kinyokun series, so you've got some RPG elements like leveling up, buying food, uh, buying new movesets and stuff. Yeah, Ring Fit Adventure, 
one of yeah one of the physical only games because you need <laughs> the accessory to play with it, so they're not going to put it on the eShop. Um, I have a problem. I actually, I haven't. Th I haven't tested that yet. I had a problem where the leg strap won't stay on my leg. It keeps slipping and then if you hike it all the way up that stops it. But when you do the high knees it doesn't recognise it. Um, so someone suggested a rubber band and I've got really big rubber bands. So hopefully that works. And I will restart again. <laughs> Runbo. I love Runbo. I did a review of this on the Switch I'm pretty sure. Um, was on the Wii and stuff. It's just a really fun um, platforming, competitive platforming game where the colours will swoosh over and change and then whatever platform was that colour will temporarily disappear and you can punch each other as well so that's always good and there is like single player content um, what they think you can still do a card but you know there is a couple of like story type modes as well and indie character costumes like Shantae Rune Factory 4 Special, I got three quarters through this so I've got to finish it um, it is ugly as hell because it's a 3DS game, <laughs> it's an ugly as hell 3DS game but the Rune Factory games are basically the old Harvesting games, but also action RPGs. So like your farm's not super big, you tame monsters to work on your farm, but you've got a big story to work through and like this really good action RPG to play with. with. Don't ask me why I keep buying phone games on Switch when nobody plays them on the Switch, but Samurai Showdown. I really like, what I like about this one is that it's... A lot more like you get hit you lose a lot of health so um the sega mega drive classics so, which is like why even have the or you know sega genesis if you're in america why even have the <laughs> these games as part of the nso expansion pack when you can just buy this and you'd have more games i don't know shin megami tensei 3 nocturne um couldn't quite on the ps3 digitally for cheaper but um also, wouldn't have had to pay to get Dante, but whatever. Cinemora EX. I do not play shoot 'em ups, but I bought this because it's a grasshopper manufactured game, so I want to have most of them. I definitely can't afford some of them, like the PS2 game. That's not very good, <laughs> but the ones that I can get, I will get. Skyrim on the Switch. I like the the trailer for this, where it was like sort of popping music and stuff. Um, I played a little bit of this. I play in third person because motion sickness, um, which people who are watching me said that was painful. Um, I think I just did a really bad build because I really wanted to wear like the amiibo gear like with the Breath of the Wild Link outfit. So I was doing light armor with something else and any time a two-hander came at me I would just die. But yeah. It did run really well, decent on the Switch, but then they did an update recently to do a bunch of like DLC stuff. Like it already comes with like the DLC, but like the the mods that you pay for in a package, like for the anniversary edition. Um, and apparently, it made it run worse now. Um, yeah, but if you do want a console version, Switch for portability. Although you know Steam Deck's out now, not in Australia, but. And the 360 version, which I don't have anymore, sadly, um, connect support. That's fun. This was one I actually bought for my husband, so I don't know why it's sitting in my collection. I will. She has about three games I don't have, so I'll probably pop them in. Um, so this is like a very light card game. Not super my thing, but it was cool that we can get a physical of these indie games nowadays. Snack World, the Dungeon Crawl Gold, I did not buy this on launch, I bought it when it was really cheap because I saw the, you know, there's bad localizations and then there's localizations that write Kofifi in them. But hey, level 5 is gonna do more stuff in the West again, they announced recently, so hopefully we get good stuff like Yoko Watch 4. Snipper Clips Cut It Out Plus was a, not the, this version, but the digital was one of the, I think, launch um, eShop games. Really love this super fun cop game where you're cutting each other into pieces. Like, it's a puzzle game. I'm super not into puzzle games because it's a bit empty in there. Um, but this also comes with the DLC, and I was obviously I'm going to pick up the physical of this. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town. Um, this is one of the ones where it was like, I got a review code but I already paid off my pre-order so that's why I picked <laughs> picked it up. I love this game. I did a review, pretty sure a video. It is all chibi style. Um, they added they added same sex marriages at the cost of removing the rival marriages which is the only thing that pisses me off about 
this because in some of the older games you could actually lose your marriage candidate to like someone else that they were going to marry so it actually made the thing place feel a bit more alive you weren't the only married couple in town um in some of the other games you actually like they even have kids too um i really love the cover for this though because it's basically the um the japanese style gba covers which were sideways and the cover up for that so that's super cute i keep forgetting to check these probably because half of them are empty and abs nothing Streets of Rage 4, there is another physical edition of this which came with a Mr. X DLC but it wasn't really worth paying the extra bit of money for. But it is, oh there is a reversible cover though, that's nice. But it is a very good beat em up game, got a little keychain, got you know the things that they claim are art books which are <laughs> kind of not much of anything but. South Park the Fractured Butthole beat um, a Stick of Truth on Switch. I haven't beaten this. I originally had it on Xbox where there was a soft lock with the Cousin Kyle boss fight. Um, I don't know if they've ever fixed that at all. Like, no one's saying, you know, you look up problems made to go and there's no comment for someone saying, yes, that definitely doesn't happen anymore. So hopefully it has, because I do want to play this as well. Spirit Spiritfarer is one of the games that, like, because I sort of meander through games, but some games just sing their teeth into me and I'm like eat sleep breathing them like I'm doing I'm um, that's all I'm doing basically except for eating and sleeping <laughs> so Spirit Fair is one of those I haven't played now that all the characters have been added to the updates so it's kind of annoying that yeah they get the physical game updates after the fact um but it's a, it's about it's a little like kind of a bed and breakfast manager like not super intense I don't know but yeah you're helping people move on and there's like some minor platforming um it's mostly like crafting and trying to build things to how people want them discovering their stories it's a very lovely game came with some stamps i don't think i'll ever use because they're not official stamps <laughs> but and some postcards so maybe one day i'll actually use the postcards that i get from the video game one day Splatoon 2 and 3. I think I actually normally use the reversible cover arts and I've just unflipped them for the sake of this video when I was putting all the games back in their cases. Um, so yeah, Splatoon 2, good game. Splatoon 3, more of the same but also pretty good. I haven't finished the story mode in this one though and I haven't finished the expansion for this. Um, 3 I haven't played a lot. 1 because it came out a month before I had a baby so multiplayer games are just a no go for me anymore. Um, but also, I feel like there's so many more connection errors with this game, so it really bothers me. Stardew Valley is in the way, way, way overpriced physical games, because this was, I swear, like $70 Australian, and the game's not even 20 bucks. Um, reversible cover is funny, it's, um, what's his name? And Joe Dumont. Um, the manual in this is, like, actually sort of a little manual, like, tells you some good gifts, it's super cute, it's got a map yeah just some basic information so yeah, much better than some of the things in here Starlink Battle for Atlas is the one one of the ones I kind of didn't like but I've kept a hold on so far because obviously the Switch version came with the R-Wing and Star Fox I think you have to buy the other characters to still see though which is a little annoying I'm gonna keep them in there just got hardly anywhere basically got to an optional mission where I wanted me to do platforming inside of a ship and then I was like um, just haven't even played it since like they did an update that year that it released of having like a racing mode and I really want to try that out or just watch a video. This was also a launch title for the Switch which I was super excited for. It was almost like do I play Breath of Wild Best or this? Ooh. Um, which has since been ported to multiple platforms where there's like console exclusives, different Bomberman costumes um, and then there was a better version and that's shutting. Yeah. But this is the traditional style Bomberman game um, with yeah multiplayer up to eight. One of the um, eight player supported games. Super Mario 3D All Stars, which is um, one of the nowadays it's physical only. It was I think it was available digitally, but limited time purchase for whatever reason. So the only way you can get it now is physically. Um, so Super Mario 64 Sunshine and Galaxy. Really disappointed it didn't come with two because two is the only one. I don't have except while I was compiling my collection like cataloging it 
Um, I did actually double check how much Galaxy 2 was and I bought it, so now I do have it. But the fact that they didn't put it in here is just super weird. Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Um, I own 3D World on the Wii U and I got three quarters through it in one play session with friends. I love like the combination between the 2D and the 3D style and it's super fun co-op. And yeah, the Bowser's Fury content is just like a fun little thing too. Good game. I love Plessy. Play, play this game. Super Mario Maker 2. Um, this was also one that came with a little stylus. Um, I really liked this one, played a bunch when it came out. Like I said, 2D Mario kind of skipped me, and I was originally considering, I mean, I don't know if there's any point to doing it now, but originally I was going to make a video talking about how, like, this game made me actually like 2D platformers, um, because I could play things, I pick a certain skill level and sort of just go from there, learn my skills, um, do the story mode, so I actually learn how to do things, because... Not playing those games, you know, I'd see videos of people picking up shells and stuff, and I'm like, I don't know <laughs> what, I don't know how to do that. Fun. Good. Super Mario Odyssey, also a good game. Um, yeah. Disappointed by the ending, though. I'm not going to say why, but if you know why, you know why. I do love that the inside has the um, lyrics for Jump Up Superstar, though. Super Mario Party, I've only kept this version because I like the alternate modes. Um, I like the raft co-op mode, like it's pretty short and stuff, but I, I really like playing that, so that's why I still have the inferior Mario Party game on the Switch. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is a bit of a disappointment. Um, you see, for me, one of the things I loved about Super Monkey Ball on the GameCube is the party games. And they ruined Monkey Target. Like, it controls so bad. Like, I don't even know to explain what's wrong with it, but it's just, they've just ruined it. So, like, the main gameplay, like, obviously it controls differently. The Monkey Ball games are good. This is better than the other one they released on Switch, which I say definitely don't bother getting because they decided to put boss fights in that one. It was a port of a Wii game. Um, but, and I like that there was a bunch of. DLC to play is <laughs> like Dreamcast and Morgana and stuff, but they really dropped the ball with the most important aspect of the game to me. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, hand play, I mean I played a bit. I didn't unlock all the characters until like pfft, years later. Um it launched basically at a really bad time for me. Um it like launched when I was doing a seasonal job where I was a manager and I was working like every day. But I really like this, the everyone is here trailer, just my mind, I obviously wasn't recording reactions, I don't even do it now, I just don't bother. But like, you know, if I was at the time, you know, obviously it'd be in one of those kind of compilations. Um, and I like most of the deals. It's funny actually, some of the characters have got announced, like, when Balf got announced, I'm like, eh, and then she's one of my mains, so, <laughs> and the ones that I was like, oh, awesome, um, that got announced, they're, they're, um, ones that don't play as I'm just happy I'm just happy they're there. Taiko no Tatsujin Drum and Fun which is an import because um I think we got a physical but we didn't get the pack with a drum whereas when this released um Rhythm Festival this did come in Australia with a pack with a drum but I've already got it so I'll pop it in the video later. Um so the Taiko no Tatsujin games are rhythm games where you've got basically oh, the inside of the drum is the red the outside is the blue and if it's big, you're hitting it like with two sticks. So you're either using buttons, I prefer to play with touch screen controls, or you can use a drum controller. Um, super fun games. This one added like, sort of like how Just Dance has the unlimited pass, and you can just access like all the songs. Um, similar kind of thing, so instead of having to buy the DLC, you can just pay for the pass um, for a limited time and be able to play a bunch of, much, much more songs than what is like listed on the back here. The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. This is one of the ones where it's like, oh yeah, that's definitely done. And then there was a whole nother big update. Um, what I do really like though is like, um, it's got the background, it's got stickers, but the instruction manual looks Legend of Zelda like. So, I like that. That's a nice touch. Um, think slightly out of order. Triangle Strategy is one of the games I'm missing, but it's just at my sibling's place. Um, I'm meant to play that soon when I do get the copy actually back because um, 
If you don't know, I'm on an RPG podcast, The Thirsty Mage, available on pretty much every podcast thing, Spotify, Apple, whatever, um, and they do want to go through this, so I will play it soon. I need to get it back first. I also have um, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4. Um, didn't pick up some of the newer Trails games. Um, haven't played any of them. I want I want one and two on the Switch. Like, yeah, I can get on PlayStation, but like, they released in Japan on Switch. Give it, give it here. You know, I'll play. Obviously, there's also the Sky series on PC. Like, there's it's a very, very, very big series, but like, they come in also in smaller like sub series. I'll play these when you give me one and two. Um, and these come with like the, the sort of fancy editions. So you've got, which is basically just because when we get the NIS games here, we get like the editions that just come with stuff like a little lenticular, maybe a soundtrack, maybe a little art booklet, which is just like the characters and such. Some different cover. But maybe if the price gets reduced, I might pick up some of the other Trials games while they're still good. Like the one that released last year, whatever it is, <laughs> the Switch version is better than the PlayStation version. So <laughs> The longest five minutes, I can't actually remember much about this game, but um, it's always good to have some of these games. Wild at Heart, um, there was a lot of, um, I think there was quite a few at the end of last year, or certain period last, no, year before probably now. Um, a lot of games were coming out physically on the Switch and I couldn't afford to get all of them, so this is one I picked because I heard it's sort of Pikmin-like. Um, haven't played it through myself yet. Um, we've got a little art booklet, some stickers, some nice internal art. Some other guys, some stickers. I want to kickstart it. I don't know why. I thought I didn't have one with Wii U. Um, ten, it's like one of those games. Sometimes you think about, I'll get it later. I'll get it later. I'll get it later. And then it turns out you did get it. So I do actually have it on the Wii U. Apparently, I've heard the Switch version isn't that great. Not as I thought. Like it just might work better on the Wii U. Um, but I do have it here. I um, don't kickstart a lot, uh, <laughs> but have done that a couple times. I also have this even though I have the Wii U version. Not 100% sure why. Includes additional stories, music, and costumes. Okay. One annoying thing about this, um, a lot of people make fun of the people complaining about the censorship on this, but because one guy said vagina bones instead of pubic bones, which is what was like edited out on the character whose midriff was showing, and then in this version, and um, they censored it for Japanese audiences too, so you can't just import the Japanese version and get it. Um, so I know I think a lot of people are mad, like in Japan, about the fact that this version got the Switch version got ruined. Travis Strikes again, no more heroes. I didn't finish it. I got up to like the motorcycle level because I was playing in co-op, and then that's one I wanted to have to do itself. I like what I've played of it. I haven't played the whole thing, but I am one of the people that does like this game, and it does have a cool little insert. I don't insert inside art stuff too this is also sort of in my backlog of i've gotten far enough in it that i don't want to start again um but i really like just review stuff came out and i had to put this down and not play really like this obviously kind of annoying there's no like multiplayer but this is like a full-on big 3d remake of an action game um if you don't like annoying voices do not pick up charlotte do not do not help her when she's hanging off a bridge um, but yeah, I really like when I play this game, I think it's really good. I picked up Ultimate Chicken Horse because some of my friends have been playing it a lot and it, it had an anniversary edition. Um, so this is like a little puzzle competitive game where you're, you're trying to make it to the goal and you're adding platforms and stuff to get to the goal, but you also want the other people to not do so. So you're also adding difficult traps and things, so it's got a little, little keychain of chicken and stuff like that. A lot of the DLC codes for these games, like not DLC, the music soundtrack codes come through um, Bandcamp. So that's actually, you can buy a lot of game soundtracks through Bandcamp. And I did a video on some ones you can buy because um, first whatever of every month, 100% um, of the money goes towards the creator. So that's the ideal time to buy. This is a recent import, Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher. I haven't played a lot. It's sort of a pick up and play game, but basically you raise 
big old kaiju. Kind of reminds me of the Princess Maker games that you just sort of, you've got to set limited a time that they're in your care and you schedule them for the month um, to try and raise them the best and there's a little bit of rock, paper, scissors combat. Valkyria Chronicles 4. I had a hat as a pre bonus for this of the little puppy but I don't know where it is so that makes me sad. What's it? Ragnarok. That's his name? Really? <laughs> <laughs> His name's Ragnarok, okay. Um, like what I played of this game, uh, if you see my gameplay demo, don't because it's uh, really bad at it. Um, yeah, I haven't finished, but I do really like it. Um, so this one and four, yeah, so this one and one are on the Switch. Full Groove is from what I've heard, an Advance Wars like game. We still don't have that yet, so I don't actually know. Um, so I got like this deluxe edition, but I got this one's one of the ones I got pretty cheap, I think. Um, we've got a nice, like it almost sort of looks like a reversible cover art, I think. It's just got the factions written on the back instead of, yeah, just so instead of having all that information. Little stickers, uh, there's a bunch of like updates or DLC, like some free DLC and stuff for this too, like including some like co-op modes, although co-op in like the little tactics types games just really is just, okay, now it's your turn, you control these people, but it's still fun. WarioWare, get it together, love this game, again, play. it's one of the first WarioWare games where you, I, I don't know, maybe there was some co-op in some of the ones I don't have, but um, this one you can play through like the whole thing, two player, and four player in some of the like uh, alternate modes. Um, some people have mixed opinions on this because um, there's multiple ways to beat the mini games because the characters are actually in the game and that's how you beat them and they have different controls. Um, I like it. But some people have like a different opinion because of that, like certain characters are just inherently much better or it might limit how the games work, but I like WarioWare. I really like Get It Together. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3. I do technically own Xenoblade Chronicles 1 because it was a present I got from my husband, so it's not in my collection, but it's I'll show it later. Um, I did originally have the collector's edition for 2 and then I might have sold it and I might regret that now. Didn't bother getting it for three, even though I could have, it wasn't as hard to get in Australia. I just, some play positions are like, oh, it's a big art book, and that's, mm, that's it. Um, played a fair bit of this, I got up to when you get the boat, basically, and kind of dropped it, but I might finish it. Ukulele and the Impossible Less, this is a 2D platformer of ukulele, and it's got like the whole thing of first level, so it's like a really hard challenge thing. Um, and the point is, like, you go through the other levels to, like, be able to beat that level, the impossible layer. But, technically, you can beat it first and beat the game that way. Yoshi's Crafted World, bad music, fun game, really pretty. Um, I think I brought it up on my Valentine's videos, but I actually don't really recommend Colt because when you jump on the other person's back, you steal all their eggs, and that person can't aim, they can just walk around, so better off playing it by yourself. Right, East Origin, have not touched. I think for once upon a time I imported like um, a physical, this is an import, yeah, um, of, and then it, and then it had a grey import in Australia, I'm like, I went through all the effort for nothing, um, on Vita and then I got rid of it. Um, I, pr I do like, really like East 8, um, which is why I'm surprised I haven't been touched East 9 yet still. Um, because obviously that's the similar, the more similar style of gameplay, um, but I really need to, because I loved 8, I don't have physical of that because I got it on PlayStation 4. But Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist, it's just fun to have card games, um, um, <laughs> digitally, this is physical, I was going to say, fun to have card games digitally, you know, this is like a physical, but you know what, like, software-wise, um, so I haven't touched Yugo since before Synchro, like I think I came in when back in when there was Synchro summons and I was like ah. um, what I don't have there's a few I don't have physicals of because it was like either import them like digital only 60 bucks or import them for more. Um so like Shadowverse is a really good one, but I got that digitally because it eventually went down to 45 bucks. So I got that. Um Zelda games, this is the only one I've got that isn't a collector's edition, so we'll see the other two. Anyway, Skyward Sword HD. This little, this is the reason I'm into game collecting, not this particular one. Um, 
a scald sword on the Wii. I was like, no, I don't need to spend a hundred bucks to get the version of the game that comes with the soundtrack and the gold Wii mote. And then I did, and then I had a massive Wii collection, and then Wii U, got the Wii U. And then the Switch came out, so I can't actually... Recently, I picked up a few while, I still, while I'm still getting some money from Attorney Leaf. Um, I've bought some non-Switch things, but basically since, since the Switch came out, I have not collected for other consoles because there is just too much coming out. I recorded the video in mid-January, so these are the games I've picked up since then, which is Fire Emblem and Gage, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, and Metroid Primary Mastered the other day, and I've already beaten these two and enjoy them. And this one has a reversible cover. Personally, I kind of rank Fire Emblem and Gage on the same level as Three Houses. So this is where I store my Amiibo and most of my collector's editions. And why I didn't use it as a backdrop is because it's glass so you just get the reflection of everything. Yeah, so I've got a few collector's editions there. All the Smash Amiibo, they're currently unorganised because I had to re-put them back. But when all of the Smash Amiibo come out, there's about three left, I will organise them in a particular way. I don't have every Amiibo. Um, particularly, I will never get the Monster Hunter Stories 1 Amiibos. But I have most of them, and eventually I'll get the other two Kirby in the mail, probably in eight months. And then this is where I play Tetris with all my <laughs> collector's editions, barring about a few other ones are in the wardrobe. Quick question, do you alphabetize your Switch games? And when you do, do things that start with the go under T? And when it comes to Legend of Zelda, is that T, L, or Z? So this was a steel plate I got for pre-ordering Dark Souls on the Switch and I feel like I forgot to mention in the other part of the video, um, at least in EV Games Australia they've got this thing called Zero Regrets where if you've traded a game in you can buy it and it's available pre-owned anywhere, um, you can buy it back for the price you traded it in for. So I've done that with a few games like this. Now steel books that I got that were, you know, not like the games were separate in their own cases which is not really my preference but these ones I've got. So a bunch of Pokemon ones. So Pokemon... Do I want to put... Oh, you can fit both in. Okay, I don't think I bought the double. Maybe I did. Probably. I usually buy a Pokemon for Christmas, so... Um, Pokemon Sword one. Not liking my being reflection in there, but... The Skyward Sword one is really nice. <laughs> Two of me. Luigi's Mansion one has, like, a bit of... Texture, which is kind of to feel, but nothing in there. Looks really nice, and then you can see the ghosts like that too. Really good. Super Mario 3D World. With Bowser's Fury on the other side. So I've got to look through the camera lens, not in front of me. And the Pokemon Legends Arceus one. Beautiful, and then, yeah, basically just the cover, but the two side, awesome one too. I also, I don't have the Switch version of Bloodstained anymore, but I got the bonus, which is a PS4 Xbox style case, but it comes with this to put, to put the Switch in and just sort of flop around in there, I guess, which is very funny. Some other accessories I have for the Switch is the Tragono Tatsujin drums. This one was an import because it was before the latest release. Oh. So this is compatible with either Nintendo Switch Taiko game. You've got all your controls there. And then, let's lift that up. So that's the inside and you strike out here for the outside notes. Or I forget, there's a cute little detail on the side there. I forgot to attach whatever this piece is for. Also, look, so cute. So I have two fighting sticks for the Switch. The first I got was the Hori Fighting Stick Mini. By the way, apparently you don't say that brand name in New Zealand. <laughs> so it's very lightweight. Basically just sit it on your lap. Um, when you could get it for cheap, you know, it's definitely a good way to try out and figure out if you actually want a proper fighting stick. Um, I ended up getting this plain one instead of the cool Chun Li one just because it kept getting delayed, and I somewhat regret that now. And then I did eventually get the Real Arcade Pro 5 Hayabusa, also by Hori. Nice and just a much more standard 
normal size one. What's in there? Just the quartz. So, one for adults and one for ants. I'm not going to take out all the pieces, but I also have the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit Luigi Kart. Um, make sure when you plant like these nice squishy tires, make sure you, these I always have to wipe and wash after playing with it. Um, and I got the Luigi one to play with my sister who has the Mario one. I'm not taking out all the cardboard pieces though. <laughs> and it charges here yeah, in a cute, like, little, cute little fuel tank side. Oops, I turned it on. Arguably, this is a Switch accessory. It's literally just the Instax Mini Link, um, except it has a weird P um, Pikachu cover skin for it. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not like they coloured the whole thing or anything. It's still that really kind of really ugly ribbed look I don't like. But you can print out your smartphone pictures with it, and now there is a linking app for your Nintendo Switch, so you can print out your screenshots and add exclusive little um, template pictures to it does not come with the printer paper that you need which um, so if you're looking at getting the Splatoon one that's coming out uh, keep in mind that you're gonna have to buy the little printer cartridges that go in here so that you can actually use it one more thing is the colors sonar pen which you can use with colors live and it has this very fancy nib that you have to be careful with it's actually powered by being chucked into the um, headphone jack and having the volume all the way up but it works very well. Not that you better tell by what I'm doing. And I kickstarted that, but it did have a physical release out around the place. Don't know if it'd be hard to get now though. There are alternatives, but obviously they aren't as good because they don't have the pressure sensitivity of the sonar pen. The only uh, Nintendo Labo thing I still have for the, um, is the Toy-Con number three, I think it is, the vehicle kit. So this is the spray can. This is the joystick. So you can there you go, you put your Joy-Con in here. And you have this and that. Uh, personally, out of all the Labo kits, this is probably the one I recommend the most. It's like the best game that comes with it. Uh, but if you have a kid, the robot kit is good. I wouldn't recommend that one for adults because it's, you'd probably break it a bit, a bit tight. And this is the submarine, so if you can see, yeah, it's got gears and it makes clicky clackety noises. And there's the little reflective stickers for the IR. And the steering wheel, which you can use with Mario Kart, but as I did in a very shortly done video because I didn't ha don't have much of a setup even nowadays still. Um, you can do it with Mario Kart but it does not control very good at all. But yeah this is uh, one of the games you can either get physically. I appear to not know where the game itself is but there is a chance that it is in another room. And there is a chance I just, there is a chance that I have it somewhere else and uh, that I haven't cleaned up just yet. AI, the Somnium Files Special Agent Edition, which I just realised a piece is probably missing because I have it on display. So, this did release in Australia. I did have an awful Australian rating sticker, so you can see here the out of box is wrecked from me taking that sticker off. Um, but yeah, this came out in Australia about two weeks after the original release of the game, so I definitely grabbed it because I didn't know much about it before playing it. But until I saw, I think the it's actually Golden Boy reference um, the scene with Iba in the forklift and that is the in sole thing that convinced me to get this game and I'm glad I did because it is my one of my favorite games of 2019. I'm not going to show you too much of the art book just in cases. The game came with some stickers I'll show off my Iba sticker later if I remember. Soundtrack, more sticker, oh yeah Iba Lemna skate, little Ivers in here. Now what's this one? Nothing. Oh, there we go. So that's the thing I've got to go grab real quick. So this is where my Ivers sticker is on my PC. And this is my daughter Tessa, or Aset Yuvet. She's part of the collector's edition, I just keep her up here.
And AI, the Some Name Files Nirvana Initiative Collector's Edition, which I had to import. Um, did also wreck the box when I was um, trying to pack everything back in here. We've well, got a little Avarantama. So this comes with a pop-up parade of Iba, which I don't think looks that she's backwards in there for some reason. I don't think it looks that good. I don't actually like pop-up parades, but I hadn't gotten any before I had ordered this collector's edition because I had a pro for quite some time. I normally keep her out anyway. But yeah, I don't like their bases. I'd rather have a plain, plain base than these hexagonal ones they do. And I don't think she looks too good. I do like the transparent effect though. Belly button. And that also came with a few little tidbits. Let me try to open it. Ah, yeah, that way. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. The game um, that took so long to arrive that I couldn't get the free DLC bonuses because unlike other things where you can just like go to the eShop and add DLC if it's free, um, you had to access it from the game only. So because there was a... Even after, you know, that partic our particular region got two-week delay, the delay in the shipping meant that I missed out. Sadly. They tried to make the sequel like new person friendly, but personally I think you should just play the first game. I mean, and if you like it then get this game, you know. Get more of the same type of thing. But I yeah, I don't they made went with some directions to make it spoiler free that I wasn't really happy with. And Axiom Verge Multiverse Edition, which you can see I got for a nice price. Um, very munted, which is why I really don't particularly care for cardboard boxes for these things. I think it was just randomly at the shop last year. I think they just found it really squished up in the back and decided to sell it. Still got it for that because at least at the time it was cheaper than getting a Switch physical elsewhere. And it comes with a couple of really neat things, such as the making of documentaries, the, the main one. And some commentary, soundtrack, the game. Oh, this is probably one of my favorite inside arts. It's Mario. How cool is that? And a big, oh, no, sorry. We also got a artwork, which is a little bit munted. And a poster, which has definitely got some stuff going on on the edge here. This is the Bayonetta 1 and 2 Special Edition, which is different for the Switch, which is different to the um, Climax Edition from Japan, where you actually got the um, first copy of the game physically, but they have done a print of that on the Switch now, so it doesn't matter as much. So we see here, Bayonetta 2, signed for the download code for it, but you can switch over to look like Bayonetta 1 cover, which I no longer need to do. Lovely steelbook. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, I like that. Some stickers I'll probably never use because where will I put them? Oh, so cute. And this nice little thing. Some cards. And the much, much bigger Bayonetta 3 Trinity Masquerade Edition, which is pretty much just massive solely because of the big old art book. So I have more covers for Bayonetta games than I have copies of the individual Bayonetta games. And three. And then here, here's the actual regular art. Anything and nothing in those two, which is kind of sad. Not to show too much. Here we go. One of the transformations. So when I was talking about not liking the cardboard boxes, we have a solution to that with the Danganronpa Decadence Collector's Edition. It is a well, not steel, but you know, <laughs> probably, but a steel box. So I imported that um, from Els Game Shop because it did not. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of the numbskull stuff is not coming to Australia anymore, even though that's where I got the first I had the Somnium files from. So this is the uh, main three games plus a microtransaction filled board game thing that 
it was part of the third game or something like I'm not sure but an expansion of that does not include um, doesn't include the third person shooter game but I have that on PlayStation 4 and we've got a cloth poster of the pro tags a remix soundtrack and some lenticular cards so pretty basic but it was also a way for me to I think it was one of the ones that didn't cost too much extra and it was a way for me to get a physical of the triple pack so it's like yeah, all the characters and then the game Ooh. Ooh, come on you come on come on there we go this is one I obviously imported I had the Vita version of the game but this is the Venus oh no Scarlet sorry the Switch version is Scarlet um, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Scarlet Ah, I don't know what the heck is making that metallic sound. Like that. This way, sideways. Okay. So we'll find that out in a second. So we've got the game. We've got a nice. Oh, that's right. It's um like an acrylic standee of Marie Rose, and then you've got these little screws, so it just sort of sits. So like a photo frame. Um, we've got some lenticular cards. Is that just the one? Okay, there's a couple. Um, let's not show you what the lenticular part does on that side. As you might see, I did use this mouse pad a fair bit. I've tried to clean it since because, um, turns out my wrists are very freaking filthy. Like, look at that. Um, haven't been able to successfully clean it. Try looking up things, so if you do know, let me know because it is a sad state of affairs. But yeah, when you wash your hands, do up to there because apparently it gets really dirty. Not in a fun way. And a nice big art book. Look at that. Centerfold. <laughs> but yeah, the, the only way to get this game in general was to import. And I wanted one of these comfy type mouse pads. But did not take care of it properly. Now I already did an unboxing of the Disgaea 1 Complete Edition. But we'll have a quick look. Got a big, big old pretty cube. Got some coasters, there's four of them. Oh, sorry, there's three, never mind. Three coasters, come back here. Three coasters. The game. And something. Some more standard editions like poster. Is that double, not just single sided poster. Another poster, there we go, that's like the classic, um, is this the cover art? Maybe this one bit sideways, there you go. Pretty good. I need to invest in some massive picture frames for some of my posters, like I've got some, hey, pro only posters, so we've got a hardcover, a little art book. These Pins, I don't. Oh, wait, here we go. So the disguise, <laughs> the one characters, the Netherworld VIP pin set. And we also have the Defenders of Earth. And that would be a soundtrack, I dare say. Yes. Let's go one complete. I love the art for that. Ooh, so nice. Did I forget to open the cases in the other ones? Probably. No. If you need to see a complete thing of what's in all the collector's editions, uh, there are plenty of people who do videos of that. It also came with this Etna Nopi mouse pad, which I use every day now, so it's a bit of a wear on there, but I really like it. Now, a collector's item, just for the sake of it, since the game it came with was only digital and only available for a little bit of time, was definitely this. Oh dear, something has gotten hecked up. That's not good. Alright, so that obviously is a replica. What if there was a Nintendo Power poster for Fire Emblem and I have gone and bunged it up? Oh, it's even got like little, t yeah, as if it was like an article. Isn't that, that's so cool. I forgot about this bit. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm really knocking the stuff around a bit, aren't I? Um, this is the number one reason that drawn me to buy this was the, um, yeah, the fake NES cartridge. Which is a good thing, so I don't have an NES. 
no point in really having a PAL region one, to be honest. It's hardly anything, at least in that region. Oh, sorry, this is also part of it. So what have we got here? So yeah, the clear fake NES cartridge. Super cool. And then, you know, you sit it in there like that. Whoa, there we go, nice and snug. I um, meant to put that on display, but I guess I just didn't have a got a stand for it yet. An instruction booklet and a poster. Map and is that it? Okay, map and some basic stats. But the number one thing about this Clugs edition is this massive legacy of Arachnia art book. It is just a big anniversary art book. It is gorgeous. Whoops. Look at that. It gives you like, you know, this was this kind of game. Release years for different games. Just some of the characters. Was there anything back over here again? Yeah, it is gorgeous. And then we even got some special art here, which I'm assuming is probably from the card game. Yes, it is. Some Fire Emblem Hero stuff. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite collector's editions I have. So when I was recording the other part of this video, which is my regular games, for some reason I thought I was missing Three Hopes, which I wasn't. It's just that I put all the games back in their collector's edition cases so that I will make, make this part not messing it up a bit easier. Um, so I don't. I used to have the other Fire Emblem Warriors collector's edition, which was basically some art cards and stuff, but I didn't like the game too much. Like I played it and I was sort of done with it. So I sold that because you can't really trade special editions unfortunately um, and yeah this is a game I actually <laughs> forgot to mention in my games of the year last year video not one I finished but you know in that honorable section of if I actually finished it it would probably be in the top picks so this came with a bunch of acrylic standees which is what got me first art cards which was what got me to buy this version um, turns out they're all very very tiny this is Shez who I call Shazza but with, of course I would but yeah, don't ask me why I thought they weren't going to be small, because obviously when it's, you know, what, five different characters, it will be. A big floppy art book, of which I have not actually opened it. But yeah, I definitely prefer when they are hardcover and not... Sorry, I'm filming with the phone on top of a stack of manga. Um, so <laughs> And this is a big cloth poster, which they probably last a lot better than the regular type. And finally, a bajillion art cards of every single playable character. This is the Gris Collector's Edition, which also yeah, didn't need to import. Um, so that's a very artsy kind of game about grief. So I actually bought it during, well, got it as a present. A uh, year that I actually did lose a few people. We've got just the standard little art booklet that at least fits in the switch. And what else have we got? Official soundtrack doesn't have the track listing. And another, also another booklet. Okay. So obviously that would be the one in there would be what comes with the standard physical, although it says collector's edition. Um, and then that, this is the one that's ex with extra stuff that's exclusive to this. Gun Gun Pixies, which is you're playing as little alien girls investigating women and uh, shooting them with something to excite them. Really, if you want to hear more, just look up a Gauss Moon's thread about it. <laughs> and this one is basic, just the um, art book, so character models. I'm um, pretty sure it has the Neptunia girls in this, maybe. Maybe not in the art book, but in the game. It's part of what, yeah, there we go. Neptune, Tuna. Ah, so sad. 
starting to think most of my collected editions are from Nisa. This is the Labyrinth of the Refrain Coven of Dusk one, which was an import. I'm pretty sure it was a present. So we've got the soundtrack. Ooh, tarot cards. Ooh, nice. Well, that'll make up for not me not being able to get the Fire Emblem ones. Is it a proper set or a magician, emperor? Maybe. Some cute little pins of main characters. Um, this which I actually probably might use. A couple of things I'll do that have a um, bookmark, so I might actually take this one out and use it because it's a nice metal one. And this guy, who I forget, would be the art book, I suppose. Yes. Nice little hardcover art book. And the game it does have a demo. Ooh, reversible. Oh, that's really nice. I forget the ways to vote on those. Um, does have a demo, but um, the demo is really long and doesn't save, so just play like enough to get the idea if you want the game. Don't play the whole demo because, well, unless you really want to do over like 10 hours of gameplay again. La Milana 1 and 2, which I think is probably one of the last special um, Nisa editions that is bothering to come to Australian retail anymore. Um, mostly, it's really not my kind of game. I know it's extremely hard platformers with lots of puzzles but it's something I hope to try through one day and try to sort it out myself. One of the main appeals, things that brought me towards this collector's edition was actually that it's got a jigsaw puzzle um, and personally this is the only collector's edition I have that came with a jigsaw puzzle. Supposedly there are other others that exist but I don't know them. And we've got a soundtrack CD well, the art on this is all really nice. That's it, yep. And a little hidden treasures, the tomb of La Milana. What's in here? Is it like the art book type thing? Yeah. Looks really nice though. And the game. Almost thought it was <laughs> sealed for a second. Ooh, ah, so good. Alright, and we'll go... Yeah, I'm just going to have to mix this up and just go with what's in front of me. So the Marion Rabbids Kingdom Battle Collector's Edition, which I've mentioned in the <laughs> other video I recorded. Um, he is not on display currently, just I don't have a good spot for him. Um, but yeah, I think this is one of the ones where I keep it apart, uh, the pieces. So we're all in completely different areas, so that's why I <laughs> forgot it was a collector's edition. Got the soundtrack and, you know, a less exciting case. Hopefully my footage turns out okay because I keep forgetting to look through the camera. And yeah, there's no good way to keep that afterwards, but yeah, some, or, you know, almost looks like trading cards basically, and some bosses, so that's cool. Metroid Dread Special Edition is kind of just one of those ones where it's nothing too special in terms of content, but it does look really, really nice. So we've got, these would be the art cards, I believe. Yeah, art cards is a bonus thing I'm never really quite into because it's either they're staying here to be kept safe or I'm putting them on the wall and then they're getting damaged. <laughs> nice internal cover. Uh, normally, I, yeah, I keep the games out of the collector's editions, but I just put them back while I was cataloging. Still book. Big art book, which I very much appreciate when they are nice, proper hardcover ones. Mission logs, so let's not go too far. There we go, we've got some classic art. Yeah, Metroid 2, Metroid 1. That's probably from the actual game here. Yeah, really good, nice one. Moeo Crystal H Limited Edition. I don't normally have most of my games sealed because I at least want to get the gold points if I can, although there are issues with even though the European and the, you know, this isn't, this is like Asian import, uh, European and Australian limited um, eShop. eShops are connected. Um, stickers, stickers. Like sometimes you try to redeem something that's like a European import and it's just like, no, wrong region. So. Uh, book I probably can't. There we go, you can see this. There you go. That's safe. 
anything in here manual i like the inside art showing off the characters got it, again got to look through the camera and a soundtrack cd which is in a proper case straight roads came with a collector's edition which i bought because it had some interesting pieces if i can the game itself is kind of whatever so yes it came with a vinyl record which now that i actually yeah, have a record player that I got over a year ago. Can actually listen to. Big old art book. As you can see, the game. And is that it? Let me see. Oh, yeah, it also came with drumsticks, which I don't have because I gave them to my sister, who at least used to play the drum. But, you know, I thought that's pretty much it. It was like, oh, it has, you know, it's a music themed game. It comes, comes with the soundtrack and also drumsticks I thought that was neat I like social editions that come with something different in them that's why I don't buy every special edition there is um can't afford to some are import only for one thing um some are just sort of whatever and like if it's just the art book and some art cards and not necessarily unless it's like a really big art book and you know even then the soundtracks are often just some of the songs, not all of them, which is a bit of a letdown. Type Final 2 Inaugural Flight Edition, which has this annoying, like, just comes off thing that I still keep at the moment. Um, this is one of the games that, like, oh yeah, I'll buy this. Turns out it's Kickstarted, uh, and turns out there's heaps of DLC that was still coming out after I bought this. I'm just like, oh, again, it's one of the ones where I thought, you know, obviously I'm not really out here preserving games, but I just thought I would have like this you know find edition like this you'd think you'd have the complete package and not that there was going to be a ton of DLC after the fact especially for a shoot up okay, good and the game boring Rune Factory 5 limited edition this is probably the first time we've gotten um, a marvelous limited edition in Australia normally I haven't bought them because you have to import them and that just Increases the cost so much just to get some bonus little goodies. So we've got a still book, pretty basic one, but nice. We've got ooh, slightly better, oh, that's pretty, slightly better soundtrack cover than some things provide us with. Um, one of those art booklets, but it's at least, you know, it's soft cover, but not bad quality. And the game, which one thing to note is the actual cartridge is different than the regular edition cartridge. And because it comes with the special edition only like, exclusive outfits, um, because I got, I already paid off this pre-order, but I got in a code for the game and played a bit and then got this and it's actually considered different software. So I have to start the game again to use this version and get my costumes. Um, so that's why I haven't played that one. <laughs> Then we have the Shin Megami Tensei 5 Fall of Man Premium Edition, which is one of those special editions that's kind of hard to pack back in the box because it has a bag. Um, I have a PlayStation special edition, which is, the box is hecked because it came with a really big t-shirt and I just couldn't afford it back up properly. So here we have a pretty simple bag, but it's got a little hee-ho on it, so that's nice. Um, and then we've got a nice little hardcover art book. With uh, Shimon, so yeah, it's all the different demons. Really nice. And some descriptions of them bugs. Type of goblin from Welsh folklore that eats children who don't listen to their parents. Huh. Anything special in the game? Just a nice cover. And. Oh, cool. So it's like him. Him after. <laughs> You know what? Oh, and we have ooh, a two disc soundtrack which comes in a DVD case. Showing the only CD player I have is in the car. Oh wait, sorry, the original Xbox can play CDs. Switch obviously can't. Um, none of the current PlayStation consoles can, but the original Xbox can. And the Void Terrarium Limited Edition, I got this solely for this, this piece, the status apparatus, which is a bit bunged up from you know actually being used but basically it's a little mood 
calendar. As you can see, it doesn't quite sit right, but I love the variety here. You've got, you know, just your normal emotions, but we've also got loved and unwell, you're busted. Anyway, Votarium is a mystery dungeon type game. Um, and you've got your little human girl that you're trying to keep well. I can't remember if the sequel is already out. And then they, you know, I, I like drunk. They did um, an, like an enhanced version of this game, you know, obviously after this came out. Yeah, this bit's a bit. But yeah, like, you know, lethargic, loading screen, not even here. It's great. Just not in the best condition, sadly. And what else did it come with? Probably all the standard fare, like the game. Now, uh, what's that? Oh, more pins. A poster I haven't opened, so I might leave it for now. Oh, Tori Gotchi Lenticular Keychain. Dead. Poopy. That's funny. And CD? Yes. And a nice CD. Looks like it's most of the soundtrack. So, I don't really get much from limited run games anymore because it is American and American dollars are expensive and shipping from America to Australia is very expensive but I do have this which is the West of Loathen Collectors Edition I reviewed that um, not as a video but back when I wrote for ladiesgamers.com beat it all in like one session I absolutely loved it there's actually sort of a sequel out now which is currently on PC at the moment that I've got to play through so obviously I had to get this Special edition. Let's see. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that's great. Shmi, shmi. Concept art, final art. Uh, one of those little and trading cards. Just had to get this. Uh, we've got a little cloth map. Um, if you like comedy games, like, well, it's sort of an RPG, like combat, um, turn based, but also a lot of text adventure type elements. And this is just the map of the game. So, yeah, if you want to know what everything is in the game, just <laughs> look this one up. It's a different fabric from most cloth maps, I feel, but it's kind of nicer. Yeah, I'll pull that up in a second. Uh, we've got Cactus Bill as a standee. You should just pop them over like that. Beautiful. The soundtrack in a proper case, um, and it has the best song in there. Really good song. <laughs> There, whatever the one they play at the Kurtz Fitness Place. And we have two double sided poster. So we've got Skull. Yeah. And we have Keep Calm and Enjoy Nothing because the uh, catalogs is referenced in that game. The origin, so to speak. Uh, I've got some playing cards, which is cool. And if I can, how do I? Oh, yeah, like this. Do, 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 do. And like this, it's kind of neat. Poker cards. Don't know why it's in quotation marks. I'm assuming it's regular cards. So yeah, just nothing too fancy. But the real reason I bought this, the shirt badge. Play this game. Well, the game, not. <laughs> Not the music. I've got the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. Kind of bought that just because it's kind of a fun alternate universe. What if Witcher 3 released on the Xbox 60? 360, 360 version. So it's a come with. We've got the game. Very boring inside. Um, so a book. It says a booklet, a map, a cloth, and something else. And I'll try to. So compendium. The little sort of little type manual thing. Well, a little bit, yeah. Um, stickers, ooh, a thank you note, and a map. Now, as you can see, my Breath of the Wild limited edition is also one that's separated. Like, I keep this on display on my shelf. As you can see, this bit is broken. It just did that itself. So it's not quite as cool anymore. And I don't know where my little poster that comes with Breath of the Wild is, but... So, as you can see, the box has a box for the Master Sword to go in, but it also came with the little Sheikah coin, it's pretty cool. I'm going to gently get this out. Um, this 
poster of the, yeah, the Ganon and the Divine Beasts. And it's upside down, but you get the idea. Anything on the back? Oh yeah, and a map of Hyrule, but a bit, you know, worn out. Just give it that authentic sound map look. Oh, accidentally ended the video. Um, and a sound selection of 24 songs. Which implies it's not all of them, but it seems like a fair bit. And obviously that was my first collector's edition for the Switch. And this is probably one of my other favourite collector's edition for one particular reason. It's pretty basic, just the art book and a steel book, but what a steel book it is. Makes it look like you've got a Game Boy with Link's Awakening on it, even down to the details of the cartridge. So this is absolutely my favourite steel book ever. It's even got a little bit of indenting on it. Um, as you may have noticed, the this is literally the only game I'm missing because it's supposed to be that and that. Um, I have no idea where it is, so I'm a little upset about that. But hey, one missing game out of the entire collection when you're cataloging it is cataloging it isn't too bad. At least it's a game I've beaten anyway. Just a shame it's a first party Nintendo game, so it's not going to be cheap to buy back. And just to show off, it's not mine, but my husband switches the Monster Hunter Rise one. So you've got that nice dock, you've got the Joy-Cons. Oops, hello. Ah, don't look at me. The, <laughs> the Joy-Cons and the back. Um, I do kind of wish I got the Magnum Marlo Pro Controller because I have the Malzano one and it would look nice together because they face opposite ways, but that's way too expensive to get now. When it comes to my husband and I's games collections, we have merged, like, we got rid of any duplicates except for things where you need the, um, both systems to play together, rather than versus Mario Kart where we only need one to play together. So he has the Orbital edition of Demon X Machina, which I forget what the mechs in that game are called. Came with that, and I don't know if there was anything else, let me see. And not that it came with this, but I'm pretty sure somewhere in my collection I have a signed soundtrack CD for this game. But that's not with the collection. edition. The collection edition is an art book, the game, and still book. And it neatly fits in there. And we have this guy out on display. We just keep the it open a bit like that. I also got him Risk of Rain 1 and 2. And Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle, which if you can find it, this is the version you want to get. Because um, <laughs> otherwise you're just better off buying it digitally because paying for the... It's one of those ones where paying for the upgrade costs more than just buying it outright. So I had the one of the other versions of Attack on Titan 2 on the Switch and then I traded it towards to upgrade for this one. But this is one of the trickier finds. Counts as his though. But thank you very much for watching and you're only allowed to subscribe if you're actually going to watch my other videos or there's no point.